Hey, everyone, and welcome back to the Travel and Tourism Podcast, my first season. My guest today worked for Club Med from 1994 to 1995 in St. Lucia, Turks and Caicos, Paradise Island, and Playa Blanca. He met his future wife in Playa Blanca, and they have been married since 1996 and have three amazing children. His first season was in Club Med St. Lucia as a golf geo. And in a very small world moment, in talking with my guest before the interview, we discovered that he went to high school with my roommate from my first season in Turks in 1994. How cool and weird is that? Please help me welcome from beautiful Bozeman, Montana, and now living in Carlsbad, California, Mr. Jason Stewart. Jason, how are you, sir? Could not be better. Thank you for asking, sir. No, thanks for saying yes, because everyone says no. So, okay, so thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Hopefully this My will pleasure. Be, pa- be painless for you and you can tell everyone, you know what, guys, it wasn't so bad. You should go on the show. <laughs> So uh, I've always had this fascination with with uh, with Bozeman and Montana because uh, it, it, to me, even I'm a Canadian, I've never been there, but it looks like one of the most beautiful states. Would you agree? Without a doubt, uh, in my opinion, it's the best state, uh, the best state to be from. And if you've seen the TV show Yellowstone, it's uh, really done done justice to the beauty of the state. Do you watch that show? I do, unfortunately. Uh, I don't buy into everything that's on the program. We don't, you know, murder people and throw them off cliffs and hey, hey, sorry, Lord, I have, wait, 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 I haven't seen it yet. Okay. I know. <laughs> no, don't, no more spoilers. No, okay. no spoilers there. No, I, it's one of those shows where I, I started and, and I, you know, this was when it was still on the history channel and I'm like, uh, boring, but it, it's kind of like breaking bad. Now everyone I know, you know, 10 times a day is asking me. So yes, I am going to watch it because I know I'm the problem. If that many people are right, then I know I'm the problem. Okay. And you also attended uh, Montana State University and you were the mascot, right? For for the football team. Is this, this true? Uh, yeah, I was the mascot back in 1992. I got to spend one season uh, having a lot of fun being the, uh, the Bobcat at Montana State University. When did it have a name? Not that I can recall. I think I was just the Bobcat. Now, were you, did you have to do like flips on the sidelines or throw pies in people's faces? Well, what did the mascot do at, uh, at MSU? Basically ran around like an idiot for, okay. uh, okay. <laughs> when we get in, when we get into the uh, choreography or lack of choreography ability I had in some of the club med shows, you'll understand why I didn't do flips or anything okay. like that. Well, running around like an idiot pretty much describes my first season. So we're, we'll, we'll see if that was <laughs> the case for yours. Now, I mentioned in your intro, like, here's here's a very small world. So my first ever roommate in my first season was a guy named Brian from Montana. We won't say his last name to protect his anonymity, anonymity but um, he's the one who actually called you, right, while he was working in Club Med St. Lucia as a scuba instructor? Exactly. So it was February of 1994. And I was working construction in Montana. And anybody who knows anything about Montana in February, it was usually about 20 below Fahrenheit. And I get a call from my very good friend, uh, Brian. And he says to me, I have a job for you. You can come down and teach golf at Club Med in the Caribbean, but the deal is you need to be here by Friday. And I think he called me on a Tuesday, to be honest. So that was kind of a no brainer decision. Continue to pound nails into, into walls at 20 below zero or go to the Caribbean and teach golf. Needless to say, my parents were very supportive and helped me get my plane ticket. It was actually the first time I had been anywhere out of the country, surprisingly being from Montana, I had never even been to Canada at that point and uh, hopped on a plane and headed to St. Lucia. Okay. Just before there, let's get into the golf thing. Now, were you golfing in college? Like, how old were you when you started golfing? I started playing golf when I was, I'm going to say 12 years old. I have a, uh, the Stewart side of the family had a uh, golf course RV park area that they owned in Wyoming. And I worked there during the summers when I was uh, a young boy. Really? Another beautiful state, huh? Do you like Wyoming? Love Wyoming. I was actually born in Wyoming, born just outside of Jackson Hole in a, a little town called Afton. 
Okay, I'm guessing you ski also, right? I do ski. Grew up skiing at Bridger Bowl in Montana. Okay. Now, am I right in, say, in thinking that you did not have an interview? Basically, someone in the village, the chief, I'm assuming, asked uh, Brian, hey, do you know anyone who can golf? So did you even get an interview like with club? Never had even remotely anything close to an interview. I went down au pair, so had no contract for the first, I want to say, month or so that I was at St. Lucia. Had no idea that I didn't have a contract. It really wasn't explained to me the, the ins and outs of how it, how it worked. I got down there thinking I had a job. And no, you really don't have a job. You're just going to teach golf and make no money doing it. But look at where you get to live. So it was a fair trade-off. And then I learned the, the contract process and got a, like I said, got a contract about a month in. What do you remember about arriving that first first night or day? Like, did you arrive in the evening? Like, do you have any vivid memories of your arrival? Yeah, so I flew from Montana, spent the night in Miami, and then took a plane from St. Lucia to, I'm sorry, from Miami to St. Lucia, and stopped at three or four islands along the way and was just <laughs> I know, <yeah>. in <laughs> awe. In so, awe. So how many hours did this thing take? you've flown for club med you know exactly yes. how many how well, many I, different ups and downs and well, I've, I've been to st lucia but you i mean i flew from the east coast but you're you're out in, you know you flew from montana so i could i can't imagine that the hell yeah. you went through <laughs> okay. yeah i i flew i flew all over the place got there in the early evening and again this was the first time i'd been out of the country so i'm a little overwhelmed to say the least got off of the plane and they had sent a taxi and at the time St. Lucia, the airport was just right outside of the village. I think it was only maybe a 10 minute, 10 minute drive from the airport to the, to the club, got off the, the taxi and it was the middle of dinner. So no one was really there to greet me. Brian, who knew I was coming in that day, couldn't find him. So they welcomed me in the, in the lobby and I head up to dinner and kind of um, just overwhelmed, a little bit scared at this point. Probably 30, 45 minutes into it, Brian came up and met me and started showing me around. And from then, it was just, it was magical. I uh, got to go outside and stand outside the dining room. And it, it was unbelievable. Can't even describe that feeling of looking at the Caribbean, hearing the waves, the island, the the wind and the the palm trees, the coconut trees, it was overwhelming. And I loved every minute of it. When I got to St. Lucia, I had heard stories. People were telling me about the wild horses that would come in the village. And all my life, you know, I've only seen horses in a pen. And I waited and I waited and I waited. Finally, I saw them probably after two weeks of my arrival and they were on the golf course. So did you ever see wild horses on your golf course? All the time. Okay. The horses were always <laughs> out on that little golf course. Now, were you strictly in the village? Or did you, was there a course outside the village that you took guests to? We would go all the way to the top of the island. And I think the name of that city at the top of the island was Castries. And we would go up there and take them. There were two different golf courses up there. One of them was at a, I believe it was a Sandals resort, had a golf course. There was another one, but I don't recall the names, but we would, we would take guests if they would request to go actually play golf, we would arrange for travel. And then you'd get in a taxi and drive through the, the backcountry roads of St. Lucia, which is an experience to say the least. Yeah, okay. I'll say. <laughs> so did they stick you in the shows right away? I don't think I did a single show in St. Lucia. I was still very much a, a, a rookie and out of my social element, I mean, I had fun visiting with families and getting to know people and, and living, living the club med life to its fullest, but I didn't really have that, this guy's a, a natural show person at St. Lucia. Did you have any, what I call club med culture shock? I mean, since you said you had never really been out of the States, so was, were you like all wide-eyed when you got there? Did anything like surprise you? The biggest surprise to me was the second day that I was there uh, or the, the next day after my arrival and I walked on to a, shall I say, a very European beach and yeah. saw 
<laughs> saw topless sunbathing for my first time ever. Yes. And being the the small town Montana kid, it was jaw dropping, eye opening. Dear. Well, 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 that's the thing. I, 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 yeah. I, I, I averted my eyes because I we both had a similar first season, but I, I definitely wasn't looking there, didn't know where to look, but I, I was, yeah, very uncomfortable because it was my first time too. Like what the, you know, and, and, and with mine, it was an employee that worked at the reception. So like, what the, what's going on here? You know? <laughs> yeah. It, it's definitely, it's definitely something that's not at all part of the, the, the culture in North America. So it, it was, it was shocking to say the yes. least. Yes. And I assume at one point you met, do you recall who your chief of sport was? If, if you don't, that's okay. I'm just, I'm just curious. Uh, if I've been thinking about this since you and I had our first uh, conversation. I believe his name was Pascal. Okay. Got it. Now, how was your uh, French uh, before you got there? It, it, my French is the same today as it was when I got there, which is zero French. Okay. <laughs> Well, that's okay, right? I mean, I'm sure you picked yeah. up a few words here and there, right? It, one, one, un, deux, or trois. Okay. <laughs> and four. No, okay. Yeah, I got, I got, I think I can count to 10, but we'll just leave it at that. Okay. Now, golf etiquette. See, I, I, I like, because I believe that tennis and golf are very gentleman, gentleman sports, and there should be a certain uh, dress attire when you go to these sports. But, you know, some GMs show up to golf or tennis in a Speedo. So did that ever happen to you? I don't think there was ever Speedos. Uh, okay, good. A lot of, lot of no shirts, a lot of bikinis, but never. I don't think I ever saw men in Speedos at the golf course. All right. What, what else happened this, uh, this first season? You have any, have any other memories or stories you could tell us? You know, there weren't, weren't a ton of big memories because I was so new at it. Um, okay. I remember... We'd go out to uh, the geos. Would get together and would go out to our own dinners after go out uh, after the the club shut down. It was a family village, so it got very quiet very quick. And so we'd go out and have uh, just nights out at the the local restaurants and bars around. But okay. uh, Saint Lucia, it was it was a lot of fun as a very as an intro into what club med was well yeah because because in talking and you know in your pre-interview because your next season was turks and and here's where where i think we're both a little confused yeah. because <laughs> that was my first season 94 i i was there in june you arrived in june okay you i think you subbed in for the golf geo quote none of but you or i don't remember each other now it's true i was at the other end of the village in scuba gestion and you you were there was a golf course and kind of in front of the club med right yeah, it was outside of the village. You would have to have to go across the street to the golf course. Yeah, so you were probably outside the village most of the day, right? Correct. Yeah, so I think and and you I think you said you were not there for long, but we we compare notes. Ryan Leach was the chief of sports, uh, Jean-Pierre Grand was uh, the chief of village and Big Ed and JJ. So it's just uh, And in looking back, yes. I'm sorry, in looking back, I think I was only there for 3 weeks. Okay. If I had to, if I had to piece everything together, uh, I think my substitution for Claude, it was, it was like three weeks long. He had to go back to Canada. If I remember correctly, it was for a medical procedure, uh, personal reasons. He had to leave the village uh, from what they told me, but I was just there for a short spell uh, just to fill in. And yeah. And we even did. Okay. And here's where it gets even more confusing because <laughs> Big Ed got sick. I just arrived to the village and Jean-Pierre, I just overhear him say to someone, yeah, Greg, Greg will do. So I've never seen Rocky Horror Picture Show. Okay. Uh, never saw it. Never saw the movie. And I didn't even have time to see the show because I just arrived. They said, you got to sub in for Big Ed. Okay. I go backstage and they hand me kind of like in, um, in, the, in the movie uh, Legally Blonde, you know, what's that? My uniform. They hand me the tiniest Speedo I've ever seen. And that's it. No other costume. And they're saying, just go here, go there, go there. So if, I didn't know that at the time that I was just a prop for Colleen. Colleen, the beautiful blonde hair, blue eyed receptionist was just basically using me as a prop. And I'm like, this is great. Hello, I can do this. But then at the same time, your, your center stage next and Bam Bam is playing Frankenfurter. 
And he's basically doing the same things that Colleen did to me. Okay. Uh, naturally, I preferred the Colleen stuff. So you, <laughs> you were also approached, right, to sub in. So what was your, you must remember this. Don't, please don't tell me you don't remember because I got to hear this because <laughs> I was it was. Okay. So I had seen Rocky Horror Picture Show, the, uh, the movie. Okay. I okay. used to, used to go to it every, every Halloween kind of as a, Okay, and you would do the whole we would, throw the toilet paper and the rice and oh the the rice and the toast and the whole the whole oh, yeah. thing knew all the knew all the ins and outs of the show. Okay, uh, but then they told me that I was going to play Rocky, and then I saw a photo of what Big Ed looked like. Yeah, and okay, uh, let's for the yeah for the listeners who've never seen Big Ed's about six five. He looks like he's cut from granite, ripped. Muscles popping out, blonde hair, good looking guy. I mean, is this a pretty good uh, characterization so far? Yeah, Big Big Ed has the greatest pecs uh, I've ever seen oh, yeah. <laughs> on on a male. Uh, he is he's Big Ed for a reason. Yeah, and I don't have big pecs at all. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and to to have to stand up there, like you said, in that speedo, yes, and with, with go those- through that. And and you probably didn't even have board short tan lines because you were probably wearing pants all day, right? So you probably had pale legs, I'm guessing. Uh, and I'd only been in St. Lucia for a few months before they sent me over here, so I did. I was, I was as out of my element up there on the stage doing that one, <laughs> and it was just one show. I think I only did it one time, and it uh, yeah. it was it was it was bad. But man, what a memory! What a what a what a story to tell that I had to substitute for Big Ed at, uh, as Rocky. Yeah. Yeah. Big, Big Ed is, was so big. I, I think I remember seeing him in the gym working out and I think he warmed up with 225. Okay. I think like I saw him put four plates and that was his warm up. Okay. That's how strong, strong this boy was. Okay. And then to try and, you know, emulate, it just wasn't going to happen, you know? So I, so maybe that's why they, they rotated that position because they probably saw how traumatized we were. <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, I love I love Bam Bam, but having Bam Bam rub up on you, you know, a center stage in front of New Yorkers is you boy, you don't you don't live that one down for a while. <laughs> yes, it was. But it was a blast. I I, I got to be honest. It was. Oh, yeah. It was I'm glad, I'm glad I have that memory. Yes. I'm glad that I'm sure you, you're glad you have that memory right now. Like, of course. Yeah. I'm kind of glad they didn't really ask me they just put me in it <laughs> but what, what i remember is the new york like you don't arm new yorkers with toilet paper at midnight i i, I realized this uh because that, they, they they didn't hold back and i remember freddie freddie birmingham from water ski would actually have a he had his trick because he was getting beamed all the time he would have two two toilet paper rolls he, he would hide one behind his back and he would lob it to a gm in the front row and as the gm's eyes were tracking it above his head he would take the second one and bean him in the head with it <laughs> yeah that's i i didn't witness that but that's a okay. that's a good trick oh yeah it was awesome <laughs> Oh man, Rocky Horror! I did later see the Rocky Horror Picture Show, uh, uh, you know, stage version in Tucson. But that's a that's for another time. But yeah, so what what what, what else do you remember of, of Turks? Since we were both there at the same time, yet don't remember each other, and that bothers me. I'm really sorry, Jason, but I know it's been whatever thirty years ago. It just still bothers me. I can't I can't see your face. So I mean, I I just feel bad about it. But so I'm sorry. No, not even a not a problem. Loved the golf course. It was it was relatively new when I had when I was there. The course was still new, very very underdeveloped. There were no houses around it that I can recall. And looking at uh, at photos of it now, the island is just built up, and there's big homes everywhere. But would would go over and usually play two two rounds of golf a day. I'd take a group out in the morning, do a lesson, and then play eighteen, and then a group out in the afternoon and play eighteen holes. Uh, go back to uh, the village and as you said with uh, with that many arming New Yorkers with with toilet paper imagine partying with New Yorkers after it was, it was a energetic village it was I'm sorry of- excuse me Jason could you say that again I know we, we armed them I, did, I didn't get that last part can you repeat that sorry. I was just gonna say uh, having a fun night with New York guests. It was a very vibrant and fun village uh, from 6 PM on. It was, it was full of life. Oh yeah. That, that charter made the, it kind of made the village, right? That ambiance, it came right from them, right? Yeah. 
it was it was a lot of fun. And it, my my time there was so short. There wasn't really a lot of inter, interaction is the wrong word. I didn't get to develop any long standing relationships really from from Turks because I was there for such a short time. Jeez, did you ever get to see Jojo at all? I did. I did. I get to go out um, uh, a couple of times and and snorkeled and took advantage of the the water off of turquoise. I mean, come on, it's it's unbelievable. But I did get to see Jojo. Uh, I went out on the scuba boat just as a guest, and I didn't actually uh, dive, but I went out on the scuba boat uh, one time. Got to go water skiing a couple of times, uh, take advantage of some of the the activities. But, but, but uh, that was besides, that. Sorry, yeah. Besides, I'm, sorry. I'm just trying to figure out, like, besides. Um... Big Ed and Ryan Leach. Do you remember any of the other geos? Uh, do any names come to mind that you re- recall that you remember? I know it was only three weeks. I'm just curious. Like, do you remember anyone else? I really don't. I'm sorry. It's it's no, sad no to problem. say, but I don't no remember. Problem. No problem. No problem at all. Just that we, yeah, we we were both there at the same time. You know, that's uh, and like I said, uh, Brian Brian was my first roommate. Um, he, uh, you know, he, he told me a lot about club med, you know, what to do, what not to do, you know, especially in, in geo meetings, you know, because I'd never, in fact, I, I was so green that I didn't even know who Ryan Leach was. Like I, I already met uh, my boss, Lisa Henson. She was the chief of scuba and I met the chief of village. So I'm like, who's this guy telling me what to do? Like, I didn't even know the the hierarchy. <laughs> I'm like, and I'm thinking, why do you need a chief of sport if I have a chief of scuba? You know, like <laughs> I was so, so green and lost. But I assume that they needed you somewhere else, right? They were kind of put putting you there in some kind of holding pattern because lo and behold, I think you go to uh, you're needed in Paradise Island. Is that right? Right, right. So I after my short stint at uh, Turks, I flew back to Montana and got two weeks of of well deserved, much needed R and R, and then went to Playa. I'm sorry, to Paradise towards the end of June and was there from June to October. All right. So what do you think uh, paradise paradise Island was amazing and being able to be there for the three months or it's when I really began to get a feel for what club med was. Uh, I started meeting really good friends, having great experiences. Uh, there were three, three golf uh, geos and I hate this, but I can't remember my two, my two uh, fellow golf geos. I don't remember their names. I, I'm awful. Well, no, it's '94 is a long time, uh, you know, long time ago. But uh, maybe when we post this episode, they'll chime in. You know, <laughs> somebody will. Somebody will remember. Yeah, <laughs> but um, Paradise was awesome. It, and sadly, as everyone probably knows, Paradise Island is is no longer there. It's been built over by Atlantis. Yes. Since you work there, I'm supposed to ask you a requisite question. Are you ready? Yeah. So did you see any ghosts? Because there's so many ghost stories coming out of paradise. I'm just curious. Did you have any spooky encounters? Never had a spooky ghost story encounter. Sorry. No, no. Good, good. Me, me neither. I felt, I feel robbed. But then again, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. <laughs> I don't believe in ghosts, even though people tell me, well, they believe in you. But no, I don't. I never had uh, had that, unfortunately. But a lot of, a lot of XGOs have <laughs> Now, yeah, no, I, never any ghost stories. If I recall, now golf was kind of like smack dab in the in the center of the village, right? Now, I mean, I'm sure that was the practice area, right, or something. Yeah. So at at Paradise, we had the the driving range was right off of the the main entry. Got to the main entry, hung a right, and the the driving range was there. We had uh, a big driving net, and then a couple of sand traps, a putting green big green that you could chip balls into. And then we would take everybody that wanted to go. We would go play a couple of rounds every day right there on the paradise Island, uh, paradise Island golf course. Now, did you leave, leave for the golf course more often in Turks or in paradise? Paradise. Oh, really? Okay. It was, I think it was pretty much every afternoon, every afternoon we would, we would take turns taking, taking guests out to play golf. Oh, Okay. And it was that a nice course on in uh, in the Bahamas. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful course. You know, obviously, right every hole was ocean views. Uh, some of them, you know, the green was right there on almost a little island off of the the tip of the 
tip of the course. It was probably one of the prettiest golf courses I've ever played. Okay. Now, since you're a golfer, I have to ask you this uh, question because my favorite movie or one of my favorite movies of all time is, is Caddyshack. So when you got to the the shack, the golf shack there early morning and, you know, took out your, whatever your iron and practicing your chip, your, your putts uh, or, or chip shots, did you ever do the whole, uh, you know, Bill Murray quote, like Cinderella story, I don't know where. Former ground Cinderella player. story. I don't know where about, to, about become to become the master's, master's champion. champion. So did you ever do that to yourself? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed. You knew that word for word by, by Bravo. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a golfer. I know, I know the okay. movie Caddyshack word for word from the beginning <laughs> okay. to the end. So yes, there yeah. are two kinds of golfers on this planet. There are golfers that have never uttered a, a golf line from Bill Murray from Caddyshack and the rest of them are liars. What is we've, that? What, what is we've your favorite, all done it. What is your favorite line? Hopefully it's an appropriate one. Do you have a, I have a favorite one. I want to see what yours is. Uh, do you have a favorite line from that movie that stands above the others? Everything is good and they go back and forth. Okay. I'll give you mine. And then probably just, uh, uh, wait, I'll give you mine. So you can think about yours. Okay. My, mine is looks like an exclusive club. Wang better not tell them you're Jewish. Okay. No. <laughs> What's yeah, yours? yeah, that's cool. Oh, I bet it looks good on you, though. <laughs> okay, sorry. You're, I can you get a free bowl. Of, you get a free bowl of soup with that hat. <laughs> okay, I'm going to make this a Caddyshack podcast. Now. Okay. Yeah, because <laughs> uh, I'm going to go way off topic. If I get lost in this movie, okay, what an amazing best golf movie of all time, wouldn't you say? Funniest golf movie of all time, but I also like Tin Cup. You do? Roy McAvoy? Kevin Costner? Roy McAvoy. Come on. Shooting them chili peppers up Lee Jansen's ass. Okay. Well, okay. We'll have to bleep that out. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. No, I didn't know. Okay. But definitely comedy then, right? Yeah. Okay. Sweet. Nice. All right. So what, what kind of a, uh, you must have, you were there from June to October. So you must have some stories. So why don't you hit me with one of them? So... I, and I got permission to use this story from the person himself. So one night, my two best friends that I had met at the village, Byron from Land Sports and Mark from The Office, we, we usually would eat dinner together and we would find whichever was the, whatever table in the restaurant was or appeared to be the one that was going to be the most fun loving for the evening. And that's who we would we would partner up with and and do our best to make sure that that table had a great night. We walked into the restaurant one night and we looked over and we saw what we thought was a very famous child, uh, child actor, former child actor. And no way. Come on. Someone go over and talk to that guy and see if it's really him. So we walked over and said, dude, are you? Ben Seifer from Growing Pains. Little Ben Seifer said, yes, it is in fact me. And from that moment on, for the rest of the week, we had tons of fun hanging out with, uh, with Ben Seifer, whose name is actually Jeremy Miller. He, is, he has podcasts himself, and he is currently, uh, I know there's a, a strike going on in Hollywood right now, so he can't do it, but he is a celebrity chef. So he'll go to your house, or your event, and teach you how to cook dinner, and you have to have a night with, with, uh, with Jeremy Miller. But for the week that he was there, man, we had so much fun with that guy. Oh, I didn't know he was on a podcast. That's good. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Then here's the here's the funnest part about this whole story. When I left Montana, I had a few lingering uh, financial responsibilities that uh, that I kind of left behind, put on the back burner. And while I was in paradise, uh, I had to get some money back to the States to, to pay off a couple, of, uh, uh, a couple of bills that needed to be settled up. So I had no way. This is you know the mid-90s and bank wires and stuff from the Bahamas to Montana. I couldn't figure out how to do that. So I took some of my paycheck and I converted it from Bahamian dollars to U.S. dollars. And I needed to get $800 back to my parents in Montana. So Jeremy and I had kicked off a pretty good friendship. And I'm like, listen, buddy, I need to ask you a favor. This envelope has $800 cash in it. 
I've put a stamp on it. Could you, when you get back to the States, would you please, please mail this to my parents? And he did. And the cash made it to my family. And fast forward about, I would say 15 years, I saw and enter the, the era of social media. I saw Jeremy's uh, Facebook page pop up and I sent him a message, direct message. And I'm like, listen, guy, there's probably no way you remember this, but uh, I was the, the Club Med GO who you took cash from and mailed it to his parents. And within 10 minutes, I had a response. Uh, and he said that he absolutely remembered me and tells that story all the time. And from then on, we've kept in touch. I'm so glad this story had a happy ending because yeah. when you were when you were telling it to me, I was like, and he pocketed the money and I never saw it again. So whoo, thank God. Okay. No, he's a he's a good he's a good man. <laughs> well, that's good because that's how he appeared in the show. So I'm glad, you know, that he's like he's like that in real life because you know, they always say uh, you know, don't meet your heroes or some celebrity encounters people have had in Clement haven't gone as good as this you know, that you got, right? So you're, you're very fortunate, I'd say. Yeah, well, it was, it was lucky. And I'm, I'm really glad that, uh, that I've been able to stay in touch with him. Yeah. And thanks to him for, for, you know, agreeing for you to share the story. That's amazing, man. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, we had um, a lot of fun celebrating the 4th of July out of, out of country with uh, all the American geos. We had, we had quite the full, the full day. Not a lot I can get into about our full day. I'll let uh, everyone's imaginations do that. But we had a very fun Fourth of July in uh, in Nassau. And uh, Fred was your chief of village. What was he? Was yeah. he from France? Do you know? Do you remember? Uh, yeah, Fred. I believe it was from France. Uh, our chief of sport was Eric. And there we used to uh, again. That was a honeymoon style village. So again, it would quiet down relatively early every night and the geos would get uh would take taxis over and go to the nightclubs in nasa uh in nashua it was a lot of fun okay was the airport at the time still named the uh, merv merv griffin like was that still the merv griffin international casino or was it oh, atlantis no no idea but it was okay. way over on the other side of the island okay all right have, have you been back there at all no have not been have not been back okay all right. Do you have any other stories before we move on to Playa? Nope. That was that was it. Great, great times. And actually, my two best friends, uh, Byron Jensen and Mark Uttridge, again, we keep in touch uh, all the time. To this day? To this day, 30 years, oh. 30 years ago. Oh, nice. Very nice. Yep. Um, I'm interested in your in your playas because of so many things, because Playa is such a great village. Your chief of village was Kenton Smith. Uh, you're a rock climbing geo here, and you meet your future wife, unbeknownst to you at the time, who's a horseback riding geo, correct? That is correct. A lot going on, a lot going on. So I so like me, uh, so you were like me. I went to Playa, every intention of remaining single, not wanting to meet my future anything. So I guess this happened to you. Was it, so I love couple stories. So please, please take me through this. Uh, was it love at first sight? Did she not want anything to do with you? <laughs> like, good God, no. So what, tell me, tell me everything. <laughs> All right, let me, let me preface or start this off by uh, saying, I love you, Kristen, because she will listen to this uh, when it airs. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And I'm going to tell, I'm going to tell it the way it happened. So okay. <laughs> when I, when I found out I was going to Playa, I was beside myself. Here we go. I'm going to a West coast village. It's a, it's a singles village. I'm going to go and just have time of my, I believe at the time I was 24, I'm going to, I'm going to be a rock star. This is going to be awesome. So I get to Playa and you know, it's a long bus ride out of, out of Puerto Vallarta, get to the village. And we had opened, we were opening the village. It uh, gets closed down for six months every year. So the first week it was getting everything out of storage and setting up your particular activity. And I got to meet everybody. I met my wife, Kristen at the time, but nothing, nothing really happened at that point. We were still, we were all so busy. And I think about maybe three weeks into, into the season, I got really, really, really sick. Uh, I had the flu. I think it was, 
I want to say, you know what? I'm going to go back. It was actually opening night is when I was so violently sick. I had something in the water maybe, but I had one of the worst cases of, of the flu I'd ever had. So I yeah, spent the night. I, at, I, yeah, I got it all the time. I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about. <laughs> so I spent the, the opening night up in my room and then eased back into it over a couple of days. Two weeks go by and I heard from another one of the uh, horseback geos. His name was Gautamo. Uh, I have no idea what's ever happened to Gautamo. He went by G. I guess it was too hard to say Gautamo. But uh, Gautamo said to me uh, one day at lunch, he goes, hey, the, uh, the blonde girl from horseback, Kristen, she, uh, she kind of she kind of digs you, dude. You, you, you ought to go talk to her. Okay. So later on that day, she comes strolling by the rock climbing wall. And I'm, okay, this is interesting. This, this, this is going to go somewhere. So I put her in a harness and she climbed up the wall and had fun. And I think it's the only time she's ever rock climbed, to be honest. She did it once and she never came back. But uh, that night I walked up to her after dinner and said, I heard from someone that uh, you may have be you may be looking my way, haha, <laughs> wink, wink, and very awkward, embarrassing uh, moment. She kind of said, maybe reluctantly said, "Yeah." So, what does that mean? So, we set out on the on the stairs overlooking the ocean, just uh, on the on the far side of the pool, and I kissed her. It was one of those moments of bravery, you know, three, two, one, just do it. And I kissed, I kissed her. I'm not kidding. It was at that moment. I was head over heels in love without, without a doubt. Really? The next morning she got up. We went our separate ways that night and she got up and the horseback team would do all the arrivals and departures because they needed to give the horses a day off. And I got stuck in the village doing rock climbing because, you know, some of the activities had to stay open. So I walked down to do the departure dance where we all stood around and clapped and i looked across the the turnaround there where they were loading the buses and i smiled at Kristen, and she smiled back and it was right then that i knew i was going to marry her and i'd been technically dating her for about 11 hours at this point and i proposed to her for the first time that's that's important here i proposed to her for the first time Two weeks after we started dating, and she said no. She said, "This you're you're an idiot. That's just way too soon." <laughs> but then the next official proposal was on Valentine's Day, and she said yes. And we are still crazy in love. Thirty years, thirty years later, we have three wonderful children. Uh, our youngest son Johnny is seventeen and is going to be a senior in high school. Our daughter. Molly is going to turn 20 in October. She'll be a sophomore at Fresno State. And our oldest son, Charlie, is going to turn 22. And he will be a senior at Eastern Illinois University. Oh, congratulations, sir. Thank you. Thank you. It's my, it's, it's, a, it's so surreal to look back and remember where we started and where we are today and how it all, it all started at club med baby. When you say Valentine's day now, was this in still in playa or after you yep. left? Oh, yep. Really? In playa. Uh, okay. I proposed to her Wow. up at the uh, El Mirador uh, restaurant, which sits way up above the village where they would take everybody for the uh, up to that bar for the margarita walk. Was your heart, heart pounding all that sweating and. Well, she'd already said no uh, okay. one time before. So what okay, was the so worst that could happen? That's true. That's true. <laughs> Very nice. Wow. That's an amazing story. Wow. Yeah. I, so I, yeah. from two weeks in, I was in a couple. Three weeks in, I was coupled up for the whole the whole season. So kind of defeated the purpose of going to Playa. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but insane. for me, it worked. For me, it worked out great. I loved it. But it still didn't stop me from having what I consider to be the most magical, wonderful six months of my life with uh, a group of people who are still today. The, the friends that I met at Playa Blanca are as close to me as my own siblings. Now, 
also we had a geo name Xavier who told a story. I think he was there during your time about Kenton yep. saving someone. Yep. Do you what do you recall about that? I watched the whole thing because the that island where the the guest got stranded. All you had to do from the climbing wall was turn so, around. And... So yeah. So in case anyone hasn't heard this episode, so the the guest took a, a laser, right, and then he got washed up on shore. Or is that right? Wash, yeah, washed up on shore, and they tried to rescue him. And Superman Kenton uh, jumped out, being the power swimmer that he is. He actually swam up, got on the island, and was able to uh, to rescue the guest because he was getting he was getting pounded, and Kenton saved his life. Wow. So you were on the you were on the beach in front of that island watching all this, right? Yep. Yeah, it was it was unbelievable. Wow. Okay. Cool. How, how, uh, do you like Kenton as a chief? I really did. We had a lot of fun with Kenton. I got to go up to uh, take advantage of having a good relationship with him and go up and have dinner at his uh, in his apartment in his suite, I guess you will, uh, oh, really? a few times. Kenton. Kenton and I, uh, we didn't see eye to eye on the fact that uh, I was coupled up. If we ever did argue, it was the fact that I would just shut down at times and want to go hang out with my either fiance or girlfriend or fiance, depending on when it was. One night, uh, I was nearly fired by Kenton because uh, we were being a little bit too rambunctious with guests at dinner. Uh, and he took me outside, uh, me and another uh, geo, uh, Jean Andre, and told us if we even so much as blinked in the wrong direction for a while, we would be on the next plane out. And uh, getting yelled at by Kenton was no fun. But, but we had back, a good relationship. Yeah, looking back, you could. Do you think that? I mean, were do you think as a manager that? he that he stepped in at the right time or like oh can you can you put course. yourself in his shoes it, seeing it from his point of view you know i'd have i'd have killed me okay <laughs> i would have i would have of course fired me so technically okay. he was very lenient okay <laughs> well i'll say because in the, in the fact that yeah you had a you're in couple in a in a singles village and and uh, yeah, and back then, uh, I think they preferred you were single. So yeah, uh, I, I, but I, like you, I didn't, I didn't marry my girlfriend, but I immediately got in couple when I got there and went, what are you doing, Greg, you idiot. But anyway, I still had a great time because as you know, I'm sure like everyone who's been to Playa and talks about it, you, you, you said it was magical. And that's a word I like to use because of the way magical. The, the, the village is made. Like you're just there with the guests. Everything is so small and centralized, right? It's not spread out. Right. So that gives you more, uh, more time to be with the guests and to have fun and everyone together in the bar at, at happy hour, you know, is the meeting place. So, so you, it, you yeah, you, it was, it was tons of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Did you get any earthquakes when you were there? Um, no, never had an earthquake. Okay. Okay. The biggest thing I remember as far as um, natural disaster kind of stuff, it was the bugs, the flies, the mosquitoes that were all over the gnats that were all over that village. And I remember as, as the, the GOs, we would walk to dinner behind the, the, the golf cart, the, the maintenance cart that was spraying the insecticide around hoping to get some of the insecticide on us so the bugs wouldn't bother us for the night. That was the only natural disaster I ever had was the insane amount of mosquitoes. Okay. Now let me ask you a question. So your, your, so your wife, your future wife, where was, where was she from in the States? She is from the Bay area, Marin okay. County. Okay. So how does that work when you two leave Playa does she go to you? You do you go to her? Like, how did you work those logistics out? So what we decided while one week that uh, towards the end of the season, a guest came down and he owned a large landscape company in Salt Lake City. And he told me if I ever needed a job, ever got out of uh, out of Club Med and needed a job to give him a call and I could go work for him in Salt Lake. Well, prior to Club Med, Kristen worked for Nordstrom, uh, the department store Nordstrom, and there were 
a couple of different Nordstrom's in Salt Lake City. So she called her old boss. She got a job at Nordstrom. I got a job in Salt uh, with this landscape company. So we lived in Salt Lake for 18 months where we were able to plan our wedding. Salt Lake was a six hour drive to my parents' place in Montana and a short two hour, dr- uh, two hour flight to San Francisco. And we could be there with, uh, with Kristen's mom and got the wedding planned. Uh, immediately upon, uh, right after we got married, my wife had an opportunity to come down to Southern California and eventually started working for uh, a big equestrian show jumping facility down here in Southern California, where she's been ever since. Does she ever, does she ever try show jumping herself? Oh, she's competed and trains. That's what her career is. Uh, Our daughter, our daughter uh, rides for Fresno State uh, and actually is quite, uh, quite an accomplished rider as a junior uh, for her high school career. I think she finished uh, ranked number seven in the nation uh, by the, by the time she graduated from high school. So uh, we've had quite the horse centric uh, life with my wife and daughter. See, this is what I love about the States. You're saying there's a riding program at Fresno State. This is true. Yeah. See, I, I've worked with XGOs who like, I, I, I worked with Joe who were, was at San Diego State and he said there were surfing courses and, you know, all you had to do was show up at the bonfire at the end of the course to get full credit. I'm like, so this is what amazes me, you know, or you can take water skiing, you know, you, you just don't get that in, Can- <laughs> in Canada. Oh man, so jealous. Okay. Wow, this is a, some story. Now, besides the geos we've already mentioned, like we've already shouted out, is there anyone we missed? Like if I ask you who you enjoyed working with or, you know, who do you, uh, did? I know you mentioned some names already, but I don't want to leave anyone out. Is there anyone we-, we Oh forgot? man, the the list the list is, uh, as they said in, in Top Gun, the list is long, but distinguished. <laughs> okay. So Slider. Obviously, <laughs> obviously Big Ed, Ed and I, our friends to this day. I, I got to work with Ed in Playa. I that's, that's true. Yeah. He yeah, yeah, I remember he did snorkeling in Playa, I think, right? Snorkeling pick. Uh he was Land Sports. Oh, he was Land Sports. Okay. Land Sports. Okay. Yep. And everyone who most club metters will remember John Rodriguez, uh, who sadly passed yes. away a few years ago. Choreographer. Uh, yes. John, John one of my dearest friends in the world begged my wife and I to let him be a bridesmaid uh, at our wedding, which I think if that would have happened, might have killed my parents. But he, he put me in multiple shows. And I said this early on in the interview, I don't, it's not that I don't want to dance. It's I cannot in any way, shape or form dance the second that there's any type of choreography. And he he put me in um, a chorus line just to laugh at me. And <laughs> I would stand, couldn't even do the leg kicks, you know, one singular sensation, couldn't do it, could not keep with the rhythm or the time. Because I was so bad at that, he thought it would be hilarious. And he made me Will Rogers. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay. And I Just had to, to, to laugh at you again. Yeah might, as, <laughs> yeah, might as well have me be center stage. Uh, I was in Rocky Horror there at, at, at Playa, but I didn't play Rocky because Big Ed obviously played Rocky all the time. Uh, and thank God for that. Okay. <laughs> thank God for that. But still had still had so much fun. The two of the most well, can I ask, wonderful excuse yeah me, go, go. Can I just stay on john, john rodriguez for a sec Where, did you first meet him in saint lucia no i met him i think he was the choreographer in in turquoise he was when, he was uh, he, he, he the, was put me in put me in uh, as rocky there so yeah. when i got to play he remembered me and okay made, so you met, you made met up with him yeah. and, and yeah. playa okay yeah 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 no, um, I, sorry go ahead <laughs> He claims to be one of the, you know, one of the foundations of Kristen and I being married is that he worked, worked the two of us and always made us dance together in all the shows, the rock and roll show. And what else were we in? Oh, Lord Cheapen, his daughter, easy. The fairy tale one. I don't remember. I played Lord Cheapen. My daughter was easy. So it was funny when they introduced us as Lord, <laughs> Lord Cheapen, his daughter, easy. 
Okay. Uh, I, yeah. No. I. 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 Oh, I told you the story. I, I just. I just want to share it about John. When I was in uh, Turks with with John, he he would love to go to the airport when no one else, no other geo wanted to for on arrival day. You remember there was no covering. The sun was blazing. And it was dusty. But he, he claimed that he could tell who was gay by their handwriting because the GMs had to fill out a card. So he'd insist on going. And I called BS on that. There's no <laughs> way you can tell by the handwriting, John, who's gay. And he had me write something. And he goes, well, clearly you're not. It's true. I have atrocious handwriting. But still, <laughs> I still call BS. But over time, I, I'd have to say he was he was more right than he was wrong. So, yeah, no, a big, big rest in peace to John uh, John Rodriguez because uh, he, he was a special part of that that season in Turks for sure. Great dancer, too. Yep, he uh, did the best version of "I Am Telling You" lip sync uh, ever, with without a doubt. Yeah. Um, well, well, Sean Johnson also did it very good. Who is from there? But yes, yes, I, I, I did see that. So yeah, I know, I know what you're talking about. Yes. The uh, my best man at my wedding uh, was from Club Med, PJ Farrell. He came down from Toronto uh, as a sailing geo. There were the uh the two the two uh we called them the mexican mafia hector and armando uh, they were in the phone booth they worked the phones hector and armando were ushers at my wedding wow we did, you do, did you do any uh, crazy you, signs after you got married because it sounds like uh, you, had a, you had a marathon crazy sign session we, we we did we did do crazy signs and sing along uh one of your other guests that you've had on dan beeman a uh, oh. very, very close friend of mine. Uh, they were, he was at the wedding. We had a big geo following uh, that came to our wedding. Um, oh. And to all my playa people, if I've missed your name, I am sorry. I could list, you know, a hundred different names. Jillian, I know that Jillian was Kristen's roommate. She uh, equally is important in getting Kristen and I together to this day. But Jillian, uh, she's married and I think she lives in Phoenix or somewhere uh in the the southwest but uh shout out to you jillian if you hear this hi you know uh you know it's too bad about the parents because you can probably see it see now that oh god having john rodriguez as a bridesmaid at your wedding would have been something right <laughs> how how memorable that would have been yeah, but, yeah, yeah. no but yeah given the times i mean we're talking you know 96 right i guess so yeah <laughs> little 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 too soon yeah yeah <laughs> But yeah, rest in peace, huh, John. Yeah. Yep. Good times, man. Well, this is uh, some heck of a, a Club Med story you got there, my friend. This is a uh, man. I don't want to let you go unless we forgot something. Did we forget anything? Like, I mean, you've already told me what was your magical season, which was Playa, right? Because Playa is just special. And you met your future wife there. I, I don't want to ask you what your favorite crazy sign is because, like me, you weren't a good dancer. Neither was I. But. <laughs> I can, I'll, I'll throw hands up down anytime anybody brings it up. If, uh, if you need a good hands up, let's go. I'm, I'm always ready. My kids have, have learned at an early age. We would, we, we taught them crazy signs. We don't do it anymore. I think that they would uh, run away fast and far away from the parents if we tried to make them do, uh, do crazy signs, but uh, they learned hands up. My Youngest son learned "Give a Man Enough Rope" by Will Rogers from the Will Rogers Follies. <laughs> I made him, I made him dance that with me, and I sent that video to uh, to John several years ago. Nice. But yeah, that's that's my Club Med story. It was a great uh, almost almost two years that I uh, or a year and a half that I got to do it, and just the greatest the greatest 16, 18 months uh, that anybody could ever have. And if anybody that's listening has an opportunity to go to Club Med and work, I would recommend it a hundred out of a hundred times because of what the people that you meet, the relationships that you build. Uh, in my case, it's led to a wonderful and could not be, could not be more blessed. I'm sorry. Can you say that last part? It's led to a, a wonderful a wonderful marriage, and I could not be more blessed. Here, here. Well, I don't. I can't improve on what you just said, uh, Jason. That's uh, <laughs> that's. Uh, you seem to have like no regrets. You would do it all again, right? Uh, as long as I didn't ever have to dance. And yeah, if, yeah. if people, if <laughs> replace, people replace Big Ed, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If if there is a need for a fifty-two-year-old guy with a dad bod 
to uh, work at Club Med, someone give me a call. I I got your uh, I got your crazy signs. Let's go. <laughs> Put them in. Put them in, Coach. Come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're listening, Hammer. He offered. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, Jason, man, I, I really want to thank you for for sharing your story with us. I I I hope we got anything, but if but if now I'm going to give you the chance, if 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 I forgot to ask you something, or if there's something else you want to say, please uh, please let me know before before we go. Uh, are are we are we good? I think we're good. Okay. All right. Well, thank you again for sharing your your story with us. It's very kind of you. My pleasure. Well, everyone, that was the man, the myth, the legend. We both replaced Big Ed in Rocky Horror Picture Show and lived to tell about it. And uh, we'll see you all uh, next uh, next week with another new installment. And here's where we say goodbye, uh, Jason, to everyone who's listening. Goodbye, everybody. Go to Club Mad. It's awesome. <laughs> you heard the man. Do it.